The killing of rabbits for their fur is the fastest growing part of the global fur trade, yet little is known about it. 50 million animals are slaughtered worldwide each year for their fur, but this figure does not even include rabbits, as accurate figures are hard to come by. Most systems of animal factory farming, such as battery hen cages, foie gras production, mink fur farming, have been the subject of detailed scientific studies, or campaigns by animal rights groups, and even government bans. Meanwhile, the factory farming of rabbits for their fur and flesh has received little attention, until now. The Coalition to Abolish the Fur Trade, CAFT, have infiltrated and exposed this hideous business. Travelling across Europe, infiltrating rabbit farms, slaughterhouses, processors, manufacturers and retailers, CAFT can now expose the reality of the rabbit fur trade. CAFT investigators discovered that these sociable, playful animals are confined to tiny, bare wire cages before being brutally killed for their fur. This is sold to high street stores worldwide, as well as major designers such as Armani, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Louis Vuitton, Lagerfeld and Versace. The use of rabbit fur has increased in recent years as the fur trade attempts to retain its profits against an increasing public disgust at the killing of animals for fashion. Rabbit fur is marketed as a by-product of rabbit meat, with claims that if the fur of these bunnies wasn't turned into hats, scarves or trims for coats and boots, it would be thrown away. The fur trade claim it is nothing like the farming of mink or fox but they are just making use of a product incidentally produced from farming animals for meat. We can now expose these myths. Millions of sentient rabbits worldwide will endure a life of immense suffering. They are denied the opportunity to exhibit most of their natural behaviours, never breathing fresh air or experiencing natural light. There are different breeds of rabbits that are commercially farmed. The rex, comprising of castor and chinchilla rex, is bred primarily for her fur. The Orilag, which is bred 60% for her fur and 40% for meat, and the New Zealand or California white rabbits, which have traditionally been bred for their meat. The systems used for breeding all these animals are similar. All breeds are kept in a battery-style system of bare wire mesh cages, with little space to move, never mind stretch out, play, hop, or even fully sit upright. Cages for single rabbits, such as those bred for their fur, have the floor space of about two shoe boxes. Cages with groups of up to 12 rabbits may only be a third larger. Feet rub constantly on wire mesh floors, causing sore hocks, infections and abscesses. Underneath the cages are mounds of old excrement, which falls through the cage floor. These piles may only be cleaned once or twice a year. 10 to 15% of rabbits die on the farm. The Orilag breed of rabbits has a mortality rate of 25 to 30 per cent, far higher than any other commercial animal farming. The main breed for fur is the Rex, consisting primarily of Castor Rex with a chocolate brown coat with white underneath, and Chinchilla Rex, so called because of their similarity to the Chinchilla. Stolen from their mothers at four weeks old, the rabbits are then caged with siblings for another three to four weeks before spending the next six to seven months in solitary cages to prevent fighting and damaging the pelt. They are killed after shedding their first winter coat when the fur is much thicker. Often bred twice a year to produce maximum young, the breeding animals are kept for three to five years depending on the quality of the offspring they produce. The meat of Rex rabbits is not considered as palatable as rabbits killed much younger. In France, a breed of rabbit, the Orilag, has been produced to blur the distinction between fur and meat. Orilag rabbits, only bred on 20 farms, mostly in one small region of France, are bred for both their meat and fur. 60% of the profit comes from the fur and 40% from the meat, although the latter has a very distinct market, being much tougher than the traditional rabbit meat due to the animals being killed at 20 weeks of age rather than the usual 10 weeks so that the fur can create greater thickness and quality. Rabbits bred traditionally for their meat are usually New Zealand white or Californian white breeds. Although raised in a similar factory farm system, they are housed in groups rather than individually because of the quality of their fur is not so important and group housing is cheaper. 
White rabbits are bred more often than Rex or Orilag. The females can give birth up to 11 times a year. Rabbits are kept with the mother for four weeks and then caged with siblings until 10 to 12 weeks old when they are sent to slaughter. The primary focus of farming this breed has always been for meat. While the fur was sometimes used for fertiliser or glue, slaughterhouses often threw the fur away. Crated and packed onto lorries, up to 8% of rabbits die en route to slaughter. At this slaughterhouse, infiltrated by calft, at which 9,000 rabbits were killed each day, the animals were held in crates piled eight high in full view of those being slaughtered. Many were covered in faeces and urine, from rabbits in crates above them. At commercial slaughterhouses such as this one, the rabbits are stunned with an electrical device before having their throat slit. When workers had a break, rabbits who had been stunned were left hanging for ten minutes until work resumed and throats were slit. Some were clearly still alive as they bled to death. For the first time ever, animal rights campaigners have infiltrated a slaughterhouse killing Orilag rabbits for their fur. Our investigators were even told to be careful that the animal welfare people didn't get to see our footage. Traditionally, rabbit fur products have only used the pelts of rabbits bred specifically for their fur as these are of a higher quality. Skins of rabbits killed for their meat at 10 to 12 weeks are not of good quality and while some rabbit farmers still sell the fur for use in fertiliser or glue, many worldwide have told CAF that they throw the fur away. But an increasing demand for rabbit fur, particularly from China, means that the fur of white rabbits, bred for meat, is now often sold on by the slaughterhouse, but only if there is a company who will collect it. Farmers of rabbits sold for meat told CAFT investigators that the price paid for the meat has not increased for several years and has remained stable. Now that some farmers can get between 10 to 45 cents for each pelt, this has no doubt allowed many to continue imprisoning rabbits in these appalling conditions when they may have otherwise closed. Manufacturing companies can make cheap fur more appealing through a variety of processes such as dyeing, shaving or making patterns. Dressers process raw pelts at the first stage towards making a product. The process begins with cleaning the pelts from all traces of fat, using chemicals to stop the pelt rotting. Undercover CAFT investigators filmed this lorry in Italy being packed with frozen rabbit pelts and being sent straight to China, where the fur would be processed and then returned. This is the only process this particular business was involved in. Clearly rabbit fur is not a waste product. Some of these furs will be sold on to major designers. This rabbit fur in Italy, printed with a boot design, is specifically for Gucci to use on their boots. Rabbit fur is sold all over the world. Barcelona, um, Spain, Allemagne, Londres. Rabbit fur is even used to make toys or ornamental items. At the Orilag company in France, CAFT investigators were shown this range of soft toys in the shape of dogs, bears and even rabbits. For many years the fur traders attempted to hoodwink the public into thinking that real fur is less damaging to the environment than synthetic materials for clothing. What it doesn't point out is that the factory farming of animals is energy intensive. It produces a lot of waste and the processing of fur, particularly when it is dyed and patterned, uses a vast array of environmentally damaging chemicals. The European fur trade is even bypassing environmental regulations by having the processing of fur carried out in China where there are no restrictions. And don't forget, no one needs real fur other than the animal who was born with it. Whether a rabbit killed for her flesh also has her fur used to trim a jacket or make a pair of gloves is irrelevant. Anyone consuming rabbit meat is still funding this barbaric and unnecessary caging deprivation and slaughter of animals. The rabbit mother who has her babies taken away from her at four weeks is not concerned about why all this happens to her and her young, only that it does happen. 
She's not concerned about whether her babies are turned into a pair of gloves or somebody's dinner. She's just concerned that her babies are stolen from her and that she is being imprisoned in a cage that doesn't allow her to do all that comes naturally to a rabbit. To feel the sun on her back, to run and hop. Rabbit farming for fur or meat is cruelty. No question about it. It may be just a little bit of fur trimmed to you, but for this rabbit it was literally her whole life. Please help the coalition to abolish the fur trade and the barbaric fur industry. Don't buy real fur and boycott any shops that still sell fur. Get involved in our campaigns and if you can, please make a donation to ensure that we can continue to expose the brutal treatment of animals and work to abolish the fur trade.